Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you are um, visiting me for the first time, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, what I wanted to do today was talk about how to photograph your coloring book pages um, for social media. Have you ever had a page where you've spent hours and hours and hours coloring it, and then when you take a picture of it and you post it, it doesn't look the same and you're disappointed, and then you're actually apologizing in your social media post about how I promise it looks better in person, or this just doesn't capture it the right way. Well, I'm here to help you out with that, so stick around and let's get started. As many of you may or may not know, I um, was actually a professional photographer for 14 years. I did children and family portraits um, out in, outdoors, so using natural light. I didn't like working with a flash, mostly because I honestly couldn't really master it. But um, here is a sample picture. It's my niece. Um, I absolutely love this picture. But anyway, you can see this is um, something that I had a love for. I, like I said, I did it for 14 years. And then I just got kind of burned out on it and I, I just closed up shop. But I wanted to um, take this time today to lend some of my expertise with my photography to you guys to help you out. I've had a couple of friends hit me up on the side to say, hey, how do you get your pictures to look good when you post them on Instagram? So I wanted to talk about that today and share these tips with you guys. So what I'm going to do is talk about some general things first. And then I'm going to demonstrate how to um, trick up your pictures using an iPhone and then also an Android phone. So I'll have both sets. Now, if you have a Google or Windows phone, I apologize. I have no idea how to do anything on those two phones, and I don't have one to show as an example. Um, but that's what we're going to do today. One thing um, that all of your camera phones have inherently in them is a light meter. So let's get a little technical and nerdy here for just a minute, so bear with me. I, I won't deep dive too far. Um, when your camera takes a picture, it will try to auto expose the picture. What is exposure? Exposure is how light or dark your picture is. So your camera meter, by default, um, tries to take your mid-tone on your page and make it 18% gray. So as an example, here's a 20% gray Prismacolor. So you see that color? So you, if you look at like a mid-tone, so maybe a mid-tone is like this orange or maybe even this uh, purplish, I think that's actually grade lavender. Um, it will try to take that and make it this tone or shade of 18% gray. So as a rule of thumb, if you have a very light page, let's say, oh, hang on, here we go. Let's say you have just a white page and you take a picture of it. There is no mid-tone, it's all white. So guess what your camera is going to do? It's going to darken it to make it 18% gray, right? Likewise, if you have a coloring page that is dark, it's going to take, if, since it's mostly dark, it's going to try to find a mid-tone to make it 18% gray. So when you have a very dark um, oops, I just knocked my camera stand. You know I have to do that at least once in my videos. Um, but it's going to actually lighten this page and make it lighter, and you're going to lose that dark black. So just remember when you're photographing your pictures, if it's a light picture, your camera is going to underexpose it or make it darker. If it's a dark picture, your camera is going to try to make it lighter. So just a little rule of thumb there. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is show you three pictures. I'll put them up on the screen right now that I took of this coloring page. The first picture is a picture that I took in just under an incandescent light bulb here in my office, just the general light that you screw in. Um, and you can see it's got a yellowish cast to it. It's darker, it's not very attractive, but it takes all these bright colors on the page and makes them darker. The second picture that I'm going to show you here, and I'll pop it up on the screen, is a picture that I just took in my kitchen um, on the kitchen counter and our kitchen has canned like recessed can lights. I don't know what kind of lights those are. So I'm sorry. I don't know that, but I feel like I should, um, my husband knows, but anyway, that, so that picture you can see is a little better, but it's still kind of yellowish and not quite that great. Um, so those are just like false, not false light sources, but it's not true daylight. This last picture that I'm going to show you is, um, a picture that I took on a window seat 
in my kitchen that's up against a couple of windows. And I just set the page down, open up the blinds, and let the daylight shine in. So that's just natural light. And you can see that has the promise of the best option for taking a picture of that page. So what I'm going to do next is show you guys how I actually stage my, and I'm staging the page um, in that window. And I'll be right back and I'll show you guys how to do that. Here is a window seat with some windows. This is in my kitchen in my home. So usually what I do when I photograph my coloring pages is I put my coloring book right here. And then I want you to watch what happens when I open the blinds to let in daylight. And I turn the blinds to the angle down and I get the best light on that coloring page. Can you all see that? I think it's right there. So there you go. So that's the first thing you want to do. So if you have a place, oh, you like my socks. Um, so if you've got a place in your home that has a spot where you can set your page near a window and just angle the shades if you have any so that the light hits here, because what you don't want is that, that's going to make a darker, you see how it's sort of yellowish light. But if we do this, you get brighter natural light. And even I think like right somewhere right in there. You can play with it. So then what you want to do is when you are taking your picture, pay attention to the angle that you're holding your camera. So if you're holding your camera with the top of it tipped up, see how it angles your picture? Or if I tip the camera the other way, it angles the picture down. So try to hold your camera as level as you can to your coloring page, and that will give you the best um, uh, so what you always want to try to do is create the best picture within the camera and edit as little as possible. So by making sure you have the correct angle, that's going to help you out. What you also want to do is make sure you don't zoom in too far with your camera to take your picture. You want to give yourself a little bit of a perimeter here around the picture so you have room to work in case you need to crop it. In case you accidentally do take it at an angle like this or this and you need to adjust it. Um, but if you're in too close, you don't have any room to work. So be sure to uh, make sure you're holding the camera up high enough so that you do have a little bit of a perimeter to work with. All right, now that I've shown you some of these in-camera tips here, um, what I'm going to do is take the picture of this uh, coloring page, and then next I'll show you some steps how I actually do the editing within the camera on your phone. I'll be right back. Okay, one thing I wanted to show you before we dive into how I edit and prepare my photos for social media is another thing on the angle. When you take the picture of your page, sometimes we have medium on our page, mediums, that is shiny. So you can see this black pit pen is shiny. So your angle is going to matter when you photograph it. So you might need to prop up the page a little bit, but you want to make sure you don't take it at an angle. And I'll show you, I'll pop up a picture here for you at a really aggressive angle that makes it super shiny. Now, sometimes people, when you use glitter gel pens, of course, you want to be able to show that shine. And just a top-down camera shot is not always going to show the glitter. So you might take a couple of um, side angle shots. I've seen take people just roll short videos, moving the page around so you can see all the lovely glitter on the page. But just wanted to make a quick note about that. Okay, let's hop into um, how to edit your page on an iPhone. All right, since my um, iPhone is being used to actually record this video, I'm going to edit on my iPad and show you um, the process. It will be exactly the same since it's the same operating system. So the first thing you want to do is find your Photos app, open that, and then open the picture that you just took that you want to edit. Uh, oops. Click on, all right, do as I say, not as I do. Click on Edit. First thing that I like to do is crop the picture. So let's get all this extra stuff out of the picture frame here. So you'll see that you'll get these little handles um, around your picture. And I like to take out the um, spiral binding and things like that. I try to make it a square since most of my stuff I post is on Instagram. Now you can see I have a little sliver of this uh, spiral binding here. And over here you can actually rotate the picture a little bit if I wanted to get some of that out of the picture. So once that's done and I'm happy with the frame, and actually I'm not because I've got this tilted line at the bottom, 
we'll put it back here. I'm going to choose to keep an even line at the bottom and instead just move that a smidge to get rid of the spiral binding. And I'm okay that I'm losing a little bit of the picture. The next thing I'll do is click on this little button here, this icon, and this will give me all of the adjustment options. So the next thing I do is I look at exposure. So exposure will be the plus and minus sign here. There's two ways you can do this. You can use exposure or you can use brightness. Um, I usually use exposure. So you can see if you slide this up and down, it will lighten and darken the picture. So we can lighten it. So that, that dot in the middle is where you started. So we can lighten it just a little bit. Um, that looks good to me. Uh, but do that to your taste. The next thing that I do is I look at the warmth of the picture, which is this thermometer down here. So this picture, the white, has a blue hue, and that is from the shade of the daylight coming into my kitchen window. So on the warmth, what you can do is actually, you can scroll this and you can see it changes it. It makes it warmer or cooler. So I don't want to sacrifice the beautiful hues in um, the picture here, but you can just see for purposes of this video, I'm just gonna leave it a little warmer than maybe I normally would. Um, but it also made it super contrasty by doing that. So I'm going to look for the contrast. Uh, where is that? Noise reduction, brightness, shadows. Here we go, contrast. I'm, I'm going to actually, so contrast, you can see how it really makes it super contrasty. So I'm going to probably lower the contrast just a little bit um, so it's not too vibrant. Um, and then the last thing that I look at is saturation. So that's where you can take your colors and you can make them more vibrant or less vibrant. So again, you can do that to taste. This doesn't need, this is already pretty vibrant as it is. So you can leave it as is. And that's the last thing that I look at. But all of these tools over here, um, the sky's the limit. You can adjust those to your heart's content. But usually I focus on cropping, then exposure, and then, um, oops, did not mean to do that. The warmth, in case I have like a blue tint on my um, page. And then the contrast, which I think we said was right up here, to see if I need, if it's too contrasty, again, that you can see how that changes there. Um, and then saturation down here to see if I want to pump a little extra color into those colors because you can lose some of the brilliance of your colors when you take a picture. Remember with that 18% gray, it's kind of evening everything out. And when it makes that adjustment, you might lose some of your color vibrance. So that is all that I do there. And then when I click done, my phone automatically saved it the way that it is. So to compare, I can click revert and you can see what the original page looked like that. So that's what you have to do there. Um, so I will next move on to um, Android and show you how to do that. I'll be right back. Next, we're gonna take a look at editing the picture on an Android phone. So open up your camera app, and here is the how you pull up the pictures, and that's the last picture that I took, which is the picture, <clears throat> excuse me, the page that we wanted to look at. So here, I'm going to click the pencil to edit the picture, and then it automatically takes us to the cropping menu first. So, or not menu, but the cropping tool first. So what I'm going to do like before, is we're going to drag these corners and just try to make the best square we can. There are different things, like I said, you could do to rotate and adjust the picture. Um, like here, it looks a little, oops, there we go. I can, I can use the slider at the bottom to rotate it, but I like to have a nice even line down there. Um, so once you've gotten the crop the way that you want it, you're going to click on this little icon here, and that's going to bring up all the additional options that we just had on the iPhone. So again, the first thing that I like to do is go to exposure, and you get you have a slider, just like on the iPhone. If you go up, it makes it lighter. If you go down, it makes it darker. And there are gonna be times when you wanna make it darker, like um, we saw before, if you have a dark page, the meter will try to make it lighter. So you might make it darker if you want. But I think this one is, kind of exposed okay, so I'm going to leave it. Oh, I've got a fat finger. 
Uh, one, that's fine. Leave it at one or zero. Um, the next thing that we can look at is warmth. This does not have a warmth. It's not going to say warmth like it does on the iPhone. This will say white balance. So click on white balance. Then I want you to go to the K at the very end, which stands for uh, light temperature in Kelvin. So don't worry about that. Just know that this slider here will decide if you can make it warmer or cooler. So if you have a blue hue, you can drag it more to the right to make that Kelvin temperature higher or that number higher, which will add more warmth to the picture. Okay, so that's your warmth. Then we'll go to saturation or actually contrast. I think I'm going to lower the contrast on this a little bit so it's not quite so contrasty. And then the last thing I do is I look at saturation, which is how vibrant I want the colors. And there you go. And once you're done, you can just click Save. Um, ugh, no, I, okay, no thanks. This is my husband's phone. <laughs> anyway, um, okay, I'll be right back. All right, so one final comment that I wanted to make. Um, some people might say, why couldn't you just use a flash? Um, you could, you know, if it's nighttime, you could use a flash on your phone, but the flash will completely change the color temperature of your page and everything around it. Sometimes the light might be too harsh. Normally, I just prefer natural light, but you might also be able to get something equally nice um, with a flash. So I'll leave that up to you as a personal preference. I tend not to use it um, on my phone ever, but um, I'll leave that up to you. You could use it as another tool. So in closing, I hope today that you learned something new and that you won't be afraid to um, try these techniques. Um, one more thing, you know, doing that is not cheating. If you're not cheating the page, you're not, you know, sometimes it's okay to pump more color in it than what you colored to make it more vibrant. Then it just becomes multimedia, multimedia, right? So at that point, you've added a digital component to your coloring page. It's not just pencils. Now it's pencils plus digital editing. It is still your art. It is still your page to present the way you want to, and you need to do that in whatever way makes you happy. Because remember, coloring is about joy and happiness um, and making sure that you are happy with what you put out there. Um, so I hope I gave you the tools to do that today. And if you have any questions, um, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to see uh, if these techniques work for you, especially if you have questions about the editing um, techniques themselves using the iPhone or the Android. I'm an iPhone person by nature. I will do my best to help you with the Android. Um, but anyway, I hope you all have a great day. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you next time.